Deborah Jacobson, Marketing Art Fleet. So today we're going to talk about how to find popular things to sell on Etsy. And I think that I feel like this is so easy and so many people struggle with this. I talk to and work with lots of Etsy sellers and they're like, I made this new product and nobody's buying it or I don't understand why my stuff isn't selling. And I think if you start with the premise that you should find popular things and then make those or source those if you're a vintage seller or, you know, if you're a digital product seller, make sure that you're staying up with trends. And to me, it's really, really weird to think of popular things, right? Like my office is an eclectic mix, but I don't really... Um, I'm not trying to compete with the Joneses. I don't care if my jeans are the popular kinds of jeans and things like that, but there are so many people that do care and there are so many things that could happen if you were promoting something popular. So let me give you a, an idea of this. So say you knew that, um, let's see, colored dogs were popular. Well, BuzzFeed also tries to find popular things and then they go to Etsy and then they find examples of those and then they share them. Or let's just talk Etsy if it's something popular and it's not just by sales volume, guys, because I have followed lots of these links and I'm like, well, these people must be selling a million products. Let's see what happens if we click on this. Um, they must be selling a million things. So let's see if we can find these dogs all right nope okay let's see how many this shop has sold so she has 1800 sales but that isn't crazy like and they're not let's go see if they're all that one that so a lot of them are this moon thing um i just uh strangely enough well the moon eclipse the the mars like that's in pop culture right now so moons are on people's minds. So first thing I want to talk about is us looking at every month Etsy sends us a list of things that they've said are popular. And so this time I guess it's dogs hip belts. So right here you can really start. If you sell accessories, you need to have some hip belts, right? Um, raw gems, if you're a jewelry maker, add some of those there. Linen dresses, statement jewelry. I know some of my vintage gals do statement, unique accessories. And then what you want to do is you want to click through to figure out what they're searching for. And sometimes you can do it source campaign, medium user ID. Yeah, I'm not getting it. Sometimes... But like a lot of times when they call something blush and you look at the search result at the top, they have they have called pink blush or they've called peach blush or something like that. So those are all clues that you should start writing down that are popular. So let's go with, with what's popular. Now, we are in June, July, August, August. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Okay, so it's August 1st here. And so fall wreath is starting to get into, um, into time. Now, this is the thing about being popular on Etsy is we know that's a moving target, right? We know that what's popular right this second, if you start making things right now, you may be behind the curve and you may have made a whole bunch of stuff and it's not popular then. So what do you do? Well, I have been a member of Etsy for a long enough time that all I did was I went and I found the address, which is emails at etsy.com, and I did a search of my email. And so I went back and this is um, 8-16-17. So this is August last year. And they'll show us what's going on with the jewelry trends last year. Okay, so this is this is dated. This is what's going on. Now, will some of these things have been specifically for last fall and now they're out of fashion? Maybe those 
you know, we saw those, um, these tassel-y things. Maybe those tassel -y things are out of fashion, and I'll show you some ways that you can figure out what's still in fashion and what's not in a little wee bit. But we can see that, okay, November's birthstone, citrine. So we know that if we're making jewelry, we should do some citrine, citrine, um, things like that. Look, Halloween decorations and home decor, editor's picks. So now we can go back and we can start to see what was popular last year because we don't know yet right this is forward thinking what's going to be popular what can we make that's going to um really help us sell more now and in the future because it's popular right um and you don't have to do everything you do according to the seasons but it's really interesting to see so let's take a little step back and let's see what they said was popular in september a sale, fall in love with these bags, sapphires, make your own costume. Make your own costume. That's interesting because as you start to look for these things, that's a month out, right? So I would say you're, if you sell costumes, your drop dead date to have everything up and ready and sold, you know, get selling is September 19th, right? And you may be thinking, oh, I sell costumes, that's October. But the timeline for selling things is so, is so um, far ahead. Okay, um, blah, 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 blah. Let's see what this is. Do you know what today is? It's National Coffee Day. Okay. All these coffee, like all these weird days, like I just found out that August, 12th is middle child day for my middle child to make her feel better because nobody pays attention to her it's not true but it's a it's a meme at our house um but this is big enough a day that etsy sent something out last year so i would say that i would note september 29th as a coffee day and i would have some things in my shop that go with that so for me i sell vintage things i could have a coffee pot that I feature, that I send out to my social media, that I say coffee day, or a really cool coffee cup, or like it's really easy, or oh my gosh, this is so fun. I could take one of my um, my mason jars that you could use for storage, fill it up with coffee, make a little vignette so that it looks really cute, and post it on my Instagram and post it on my um, Pinterest, and then you could look it up and say coffee day hashtags, right? And then you would just use those hashtags. And it's easy to see coffee day is just hashtag coffee day. You could say international coffee day, right? So that's a way that you can use something that's popular to promote something that's in your shop, right? So that's kind of fun. I love that idea. So I would go back through all of your trends for the years in your mailbox. If you've been selling for more than a year, you have a year's worth and you can kind of stay ahead of it. So let's say we were going to do, and I have a worksheet for this, of course, because I'm me. So I would say picking popular topics, I would write in here like September right i do this on paper but i could write it in here september and then i would say coffee day i think it was the 29th we're not doing this on you know perfectly we're just trying to get it so trends go here so coffee day is uh and then we had that kind of let's say it was citrine you know uh the birthstone for November. That's the thing, right? Like when you're in, you're looking at your plan for September on what to make, what to, to promote, what to research, people are shopping for two months later. 
So you want to make sure that you're aware of that. Okay, so now we're going to go and you've got your um, things. I may may go through and kind of try to find some of those in a, in a blog post. All right, so now we have what Etsy has sent us this month. And I think that there's going to be some universal things and then there's going to be some things that really go with the season. So this leaf necklace, I have to think, is coming up because it's the end of end of July, first day of April or August, and fall's coming. Like this is more of a fall com color than I would think of as a summer color. Um, this is a fall wreath. So you know that, um, and I would make a note of it in my, like I keep a notebook of times that things happen, but I would say knowing that, that, and I wrote a blog post about this, hang on. There's a whole blog post about seasonality, so I will include a link to that in the description below. But if you look at um, the dates that things happen, let's go down to fall. So back to school is July 1st through August 30th. I'm telling you, I have bought my children's backpacks already. I do know that I have to go and do some school supply shopping. But my daughter is done with her school um, clothing. My son is. We maybe have a couple little things left to do. But if you're thinking, oh, okay, August 1st is back to school, it was actually July 1st. And then we have, um, so fall. Fall is July 15th to September 30th. So you could absolutely know that, um, and that's according to, to Google Trends. That's when people start searching for fall. So it's a very handy thing. I have a little handout for that. Like I told you, I'm queen of the handouts. There's a marketing sheet that will tell you those dates. So um, that will probably help you. So this is how we find these ones in um, directly from Etsy. And that's nice. Um, they're not telling us everything. They're not giving us a ton of information. There's that blush. So they're saying soft for summer blush. Um, you know, I would, I would, I would wonder if that's going to stay, but that has been, I know they, they have sent out about blush before. So I would almost think that maybe blush is something that, uh, you would want to kind of start, start thinking about as far as maybe a color to make something blush or make it pink or whatever. All right. So we have blush stuff. We have, Candles. Candles are really, really um, popular. Natural Living's really popular, but so let's do candles, wax melts, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, what is that? Wedding ideas? Okay, so, you know, I think if we look at these wedding ideas, we're going to see it's not really the summer um, summer things anymore. This looks to me a little bit more like fall with the dried flowers and things like that. But wedding is always, I mean, we could, we could put wedding down as on Etsy, you know, every month is wedding month at Etsy. Okay, so that's fun. So, but let's get bigger than Etsy. I think that's where... We can find all our creative ideas that where we can really start to get into, um, like, I think that's, that is cool. So that is a Victorian locket crescent. Okay. So does she have moon? So she does have moon rhinestone. So look at that. She's under celestial. So they are, um, they're saying it's celestial. That is really neat. So you vintage girls, we can get on these trends. We just need to know what they're, like functionally what they're calling the trends so we can label our things those trends, okay? All right, so the, you want to get real familiar with the National Retail Federation. And they talk a lot about consumer trends, right? Like they talk a lot about, I thought this was super interesting, July 15th, um, Prime Day are changing the back to school calendar. And then there was one down here about, about millennial parents shop differently than other parents. Like they are not going to shoppers now. I mean, I swore, I swore by all that is holy that I would always go to stores to buy things. 
And I bought more than half of my kids' Christmas presents online last year. And there's a good chance that that number, like that number isn't going to go down, right? I may still only do half, but now, you know, Toys R Us is gone. My kids are getting a little bit older. I may not be doing any, you know, of my big shopping. I may go pick up stocking stuffers or things like that, but I may not do any of my shopping in stores. It may be all online, which is awesome for us Etsy people. So you, okay, uh, so this is... So this is another way that you can go back. So you can go back through all their blog posts and look at what people were looking at, what, what the Retail Federation was saying people were looking at for Valentine's Day. Okay. And, oh, I would love all their charts and data. It's so expensive, but you can kind of get some of it from here. All right, um, they're doting pet parents, so they want, you know, something they spend on Valentine's Day for their pets. Well, that is something that I absolutely need to know, right? That there's hearts, that it's pink, that it's me time. Okay, so those are all really good things. That's the National Retail Federation, and I will have all these links below. Next is Trend Hunter. Now, we are going to dig into this Trend Hunter for a wee little bit of time here because this is an amazing place. So first off, I always like to come down here and they will talk about the six patterns of opportunity and the 18 mega trends. So I guess somewhere these may be the six patterns of, of I don't know what it means, but I wanna know what's going on that people are buying. So specialization, um, curation, those are kind of, I think these are the high level ones, but I wanna know post-sumerism. Um, let's see, simplicity, uh, in a fast paced cluttered world, simplicity stands out. Okay. So we want to put simplicity. All right. Uh, tech. Okay. Tech AR, you know, so if you are into tech, I'm not into tech, so I'm not going to pick any of those tech ones, but you would do that. So retro and nostalgia are big retro and nostalgia i mean think of that girls if you're selling vintage two out of you know 24 are our genres right naturality so they want local organic recyclable organic let's do organic right all right um youthfulness playful Tribal. Tribalism means that you like things that are, um, you know, l l like you, right? If I could type, I would take over the world, people. Okay. Uh, gamification. So you can go through these. And then what you want to do is you want to come up here, and this will give you all kinds of, of things. So we have ideas. So if we say this month of ideas... So we have houses, we have modern branding, vegan beverages. Okay, so vegan is getting bigger. So we, we would write down, you know, under our organic, we would have vegan. So, and that is vegan candles, that is vegan clothing, that is vegan. Like people are getting more natural. Uh, tech concealing workstations. Okay, if I sold tech, I would try to figure out a way to hide that tech, because this is the second time that we have seen simplifying tech. Yoga, so I, I like yoga, that seems very nice. Um, grab and go breakfast kits. Okay, so if you are selling, um, you could sell kits, if you're making those little mason jar kits, you could sell those, you could also sell something that allows people to organize their kits. Oh my gosh, you could, if you're selling digital, you could sell, a, um, you know, a prepping meal planner type thing. You want to look at what does that mean? Like, what does this grab and go breakfast kit mean? And what it means is people feel overwhelmed and they feel like they need the, that, that convenience where they can just grab something and go. Okay. Uh, digital again. I mean, like, I think if you like digital, it's something to do. 
uh, funky package design. This is what you could think of for how you um, are presenting yourself in your brand and things like that. So uh, let's see. So it's kind of primary colors, that really funny font, uh, very modern font. There we saw organic again. So that is coming in. Smart storage. So storage. All right, we're killing it. Okay, so we got this pop-up tents. I am not a tent outdoor girl. Social good. So there is, I see a lot of Etsy sellers that are doing this where they're donating a pro, por portion of their proceeds to a cause, and that's always really nice. I don't think it's necessary, but if that's your feeling, then that's what you should do. Um, we've seen a lot of donuts, round things, sprinkles. I mean, then you want to start just thinking about what you're seeing. What does this all mean? Is this um, like our sweets coming back in? Remember when you would never have seen a donut because the carb thing was going on? And, you know, I know it's so funny. I'm a pescatarian, so I only eat fish. I don't eat any other kind of meat. And Facebook is showing me nothing but keto ads. And I'm like, dude, I wouldn't have anything to eat because, you know, um, cosmetics. So you would want to look at. And the nice thing is, okay, look at this. So we could go to that full article and they will tell us um, hybrid treats, you know, stuffed bagels. They'll tell us what's going on. And then they have related topics. So for whatever your industry is you want to do this so let's go back because there's other things i make videos so i feel like it's really good to take a peek through here and see what videos they're doing so accidental mo motif okay stone lighting so this is something that you could look at to see you know what how are they doing their behind the scenes videos these behind the scenes videos are very popular right now and etsy sellers are like well i don't know what i would do start watching some of these videos okay let's talk about this it should be smacking you in the face by now moons are the urban outfitters moon himalayan okay could it be more obvious that they that the trend spotters and the popular people think that moons are hot right now now, will that end? Yes, but we know that for right now, if you have moons, make them your featured product. Share those suckers on your Facebook. Share them on your Instagram. You know, this is all a case of how are you presenting your things. So this trend hunter is my all-time favorite. I could spend hours in here. Okay, the knot. So I couldn't, seeing as how we're talking about Etsy, I couldn't ignore the knot and what i think you know i think a lot of etsy sellers will come in here and be like okay well i need to find out what what is doing but i just want to find out what's popular right because these people are going to tell us so here it is a wedding vision that so you right there rustic chic seaside elegant turn define your style okay so I would sign up and see what, you know, modern eclectic, I would see all the options that they're giving. And then I would try to make products or source products, if you're a vintage seller, that match those and then use those words in your, um, so, so if modern is a word that seems to be coming up, I would use modern and then figure out what other words those are that people might be looking for. So clean, um, contemporary, uh, you know, geez, go to, go to the, the oh, what are they called? Synonyms? I do not know how to say that. Okay, so then we're going to do modern. Okay, so we have contemporary, current, modernized, state-of-the-art, stylish, avant-garde. So these are all words that you want to start thinking about using in your titles and tags based on the fact that the knot says modern is one of the three types of, and I would do, if I was, like I would totally do it if I was selling wedding stuff. 
Um, so this is a really, really good day. I would also go to Wedding Vision, right? Like this is, what we're selling is, oh, take a style quiz. Okay. Um, what we're selling is the, and I think their ideas and advice is their blog. You would just have to take a little look around, right? Um, all right, so let's do fashion and jewelry. Um, oval diamond engagement rings, okay? So this is good. We know that oval is a shape for rings. Um, your wedding veil, so if you're selling wedding veils, wedding guest attire, what's hot right now? So mother of the bride, sister of the bride, things like that. You can put in your listings and so people can can do that bachelorette i mean it's so so oh personalize your wedding let's see it's four m m's but have they shown any etsy shops like they're saying you can personalize it but look if you sell these little party favors or if you sell slabs of wood you want to you know i've done on my etsy store In my updates, what I'll do is I'll say, they used one like mine. Oops, that doesn't help, sorry. Um, I get so excited, but I found this picture in Architectural Digest and I was like, they used one like mine. Look, their little architectural bookends. I have architectural bookends. They have dogs on a mantle. I have a dog you can put on your mantle. So you can totally, um, you know, use these things. The knot says you should buy one of my wood things, right? Okay, let's keep moving. So I love Rachel Hollis and she is, I want, um, I don't want recipes. So let's do style. What does it say about style? Okay, so she's, this feels like, okay, hosting a girl's night. All right. Oh, how to style grandma's tablecloth. Okay, so if you are a vintage seller and you want to know what's happening, look to these girls on the internet and she's using a grandma tablecloth. Now, there are hundreds of women in the world who are going to go, oh, I need to style my, my table like Rachel did and they don't have grandma's tablecloth. So then they go on Etsy, they go on eBay, they go looking around for a vintage crochet tablecloth okay and look there is etsy there's etsy jesus that's a fifteen hundred dollar tablecloth god bless her okay there's some on ebay there's all of the etsy's okay so these, this is why you need to know what's going on in the world. I get this app called Texture. Texture. So I'm not going to give you the knot. I'll give you these other ones. You don't need that. Okay, so this Texture app gives you access to all these magazines. And I look at all these magazines to see. It's like 10, 10 bucks a month. Um, to see what's in style now so I can talk about it in my in my glamorously vintage store I need to know and the other thing that it does is it makes me so happy because when I'm asking for $75 for a um, doorstop that I sourced from a antique auction that I had to sit there for a billion years and then I had to schleb home and clean up and do all that and I see that they have, you know, like the, <laughs> the, the G jaws they have sitting on the counter there are $1,500 or $1,500 for a lace tablecloth makes me feel really good about my prices. So anyways, that's another one you can do. I'll put all these in the, in the description below. Okay. Um, so if you sell party supplies or if you sell anything related to parties, you want to be following catch my party because they have all kinds of people that are doing things now for me i don't love pink mini mouse because that is uh trademarked moana is but pink and gold party ideas cha-ching 
And then you know that you want to start really thinking about how do you, um, like, what are these pink and gold party ideas? So we have second birthday, so lots of that. Princess party, so I love that this is a princess party, but it's not that you may want to send some of your pictures of your things into Crash My Party, or I think you can, I think you can catch my party. I think you can submit them, add party right there. So you could absolutely submit your items to this party website and they may feature them to the bajillions of people that come to see it. So these are free printables, these are paid printables, these are, you know, if you sell something that goes with parties, then this would be a really neat thing to, to take a peek at. But all you have to do, if this is your industry, if this, if you make party supplies, you need to figure out which are the big websites that are setting trends for parties. If you do weddings, you need to be reading Modern Bride. You need to be, you know, looking at that and not be so stuck in, in your head or what you think you should do you should be looking for popular things. So now let's go back and see what, so I would have done lots of research, right? So I would say things that I like, check if popular. Um, so I would check, so I like antiques and vintage. So I wanna make a, oops, oopsie daisy. I wanna make a circle in here, right? And then I want to just draw lines from antique vintage. Yes, because we saw that, oops, I got to get my, my line fatter. Okay, because we saw that retro nostalgic is cool. Yay! All right, so jewelry would probably be good all the time. Clothing all the time would be good. Crafts. Now, I would have thought crafts more, but I didn't see a whole lot of people want to do their own crafts. I think I feel more like that simplicity and bringing it back to basics. Um, so I would say natural living and organic vegan because I'm pretty close to that or close to vegetarian. Um, okay, candles and wax melt, you know, if that's something you like doing you're going to need to think about it in an organic or vegan way. You can't, you know, people are willing to pay more for those kinds of things. Okay, now cats and dogs, anything? Oh, cats and dogs. So you could do cats and dogs and tribalism. So say you made t-shirts and you, you get frustrated because boy mom is taken and these popular things are taken. But what you can do is look beyond what is popular sayings and look for popular groups of people. And I would say that people that like beagles really like beagles and people that like chihuahuas really like chihuahuas. So you could find groups of people that match your interests like crazy cat ladies or say, you know, I had cats and books, then I could make you know, um, tumblers for cat, crazy cat ladies or something like that. And it's when you're mixing what is popular with what you like to do that then the ideas really start to generate as opposed to you're going, oh, well, weddings are popular. I better try to come up with, like if you're, if you have that attitude and that feeling when you're trying to come up with something to sell, people aren't going to buy it because you're not like super excited. You don't know about it. You're not like, oh my God, this is the greatest. You don't post about it every 15 minutes on Instagram, not because you're trying to sell it, but because you're like, oh my God, did you see this thing I made? So hopefully that helps. Um, oh, so down here you can do things I like, popular themes, popular trends about me and about my customers. So Let's say you were doing weddings for 50 plus year old women. That would be really interesting because that would be a lot different than if you're doing wedding things. You know, it could be second weddings. It could be mixed family weddings. Like you could have all kinds of fun things that you have to go with the fact that this may not be her first walk down the aisle, right? And then I have blog post video titles here. So you could put, you know, your product titles or something that you're doing. Uh, so hopefully that helps. Tara Jacobson.
Marketing Artfully. And if you like videos like this, make sure to click the like button. And if you'd like to see more, make sure you to click the subscribe so you don't lose me. Okay, thanks.